Hello and welcome to Fisher with another DCS video. This video we're going to look at the AV-8B and the, the Harrier night, night attack aircraft which is the latest model in the DCS series. It's currently in early release so a lot of um, the features and functions and avionics and systems are not functioning yet. However, uh, there is a lot of work already done on the flight modeling and uh, that's what I'm going to focus on most uh, for this video. I'm going to look at the startup procedures, engine start, the starting up systems and I'll go through what I know about the systems as they are, what works and what doesn't work. Uh, and then we're going to do a vertical takeoff, um, a quick circuit back to the carrier and a vertical landing. And then we're going to do a short takeoff uh, again back to the carrier and landing and we'll leave it at that. Okay, we're going to now go through our startup process and I'm going to talk you through the systems as we go through these one by one. So, we're going to switch our battery on and our generator and we're going to look around the pit and we can see that we've our fuel state is zero so we're going to have to request this from our ground crew and we're going to go to 50% Blue is fine. Request refueling. Request Copy. rearming. Copy. Okay, well that's the uh, starting. We're going to start uh, setting up our systems now. We're going to switch our fuel cutoff lever here to the on position, which is a bit of contradiction from what I can see. Uh, if it's a shut off lever and it's in the on position, it should be shutting off the fuel. It's not the case. So we're going to switch the deck switch to on, and this is the engine uh, control management system. Nothing here, everything here should be in default. This lid system is a small um, flap which is part of the undercarriage and opens to again to control airflow and improve the lift characteristics of the aircraft. Uh, it's stowed away with the uh, gear when the gear is retracted. Oxygen, we can switch it on though we don't need it in this. Lights, gonna switch a couple of these on. Formation position and anti-collision. Fuel proprietary switch to switch to on, left and right pumps on and our throttle quadrant. I'm going to I'm going to switch off our parking brake here, lever, and I'm going to show you that our throttle can move back and forward quite nicely. Now if I go into idle position there and I engage the parking brake once again, it could be done by by finding it here, uh, right clicking or left clicking on the on the item. Um, if I have it switched off now I can't move the I can't move the throttle, which is a safety switch. But for starting the engine what we need Refueling to be complete. we need to be in the in the uh, engine cutoff position for the throttle. And we do I do it by lifting my throttle and clicking on the engine cutoff button. You can see that little latch on there has to be lifted in order for the pilot to do that. So we can't do it by accident when he slams his throttle back if he needs to during flight. Um, you wouldn't want that because the engine would cut out. But for this we needed this position to start with. Next to this we have our our lever for adjusting the nozzles and I'm sure anybody who's looking at this knows a little bit about the Harrier so they know, the, complete. They know what the nozzles do. Basically the nozzles divert the, the thrust um, anywhere between uh, vertical behind the aircraft or horizontal behind the aircraft to vertical. And actually they go from about 0 degrees to about 110 degrees so it has the potential to drive the aircraft backward and uh, so if, you, if you're going forward and you still need to stop the aircraft by adjusting this you can actually um, just just slow it down to a stop that's why it's that's why it's got such a wide configuration so we're going to crack this to uh, just a little bit off the zero position for for engine start the SAS panel contains our control our flight control um, uh, buttons for the three channels there, yaw pitch and roll, the master switch, Q field switch and the RPS and yaw and this gives us a little bit of control over the aircraft when there's no um, when there's no air flowing over the, the control surfaces which would normally allow us to to change our, our pitch and our yaw but uh, it's important to note that this is the 
this this can do uh, a job only over a small amount of tolerance so you can't do wild maneuvers with this next panel our anti-skid uh, controls whether we use whether we're in anti-skid mode or nose wheel steering mode uh, my advice is for takeoff and landing it should be in the on position all the time now you can actually leave it in the on position all, all the time because you can toggle a that is not toggle you can activate a nose wheel steering from the nose wheel steering button on the hotas and in even if this is in the in the on position so the nose wheel steering is off by toggling this button you can activate the nose wheel steering button as necessary and it's important that the nose wheel steering button is not left in the on position on the landing and takeoff and the reason why is because on landing um, particularly if it's a vertical landing or a stall landing you'll find that the aircraft there might be lateral uh, forces on the aircraft or there might not be your you might not have a complete uh, forward um, movement vector velocity vector and so when the aircraft touches down it might have a tendency to move left or right the nose and in this position the nose wheel behaves like a caster wheel so basically it follows the inertia of the aircraft moving on to the flaps we're going to leave them full up for the moment we'll talk about this a bit more when we have the engine power and this is H2O is another engine augmentation system it's uh, an injection system for injecting fuel into the turbines uh, during flight and it's once again it's not something that you will want to do it continuously during flight it's designed to give an extra boost it's almost like a turbo give an extra boost when it's necessary and this may be necessary during takeoff or landing depending on the configuration and the loadout of the aircraft we have a nice handy clock here because we have no measure way of measuring the amount of H2O left and it's done quite ad hoc with um, uh, with an estimate of the number of seconds left I think it's approximately 90 from the documentation and this clock is there to help the pilot keep track of what he's got left it's not working at the moment nothing we can do with our glass cockpit at the moment until we have uh, full power from our generator and we're going to go over here and now start the engine uh, just a final check to make sure nozzles are cracked um, flaps are fully up and in the off position anti-skid is in the on position um, our throttle is in idle parking brake is on and we're good to go now the only thing we're doing here is we're getting ground power and the APU generator is not working on this so we're basically just simulating ground power all the time um, and we don't have to do any uh, communications with the ground to do this in a later version it will be we will differentiate and we will be calling for ground power if we run out of APU power uh, during a flight so for this I'm going to switch the engine into uh, into on and what's happening now is that our revs are going to go up to about 92 um, and this is enough uh, revving of the turbine this is driven by an electrical motor and it's just enough um, revving of the engine in order to allow the engine to pick up its own pace when we inject fuel from our throttle lever here so we've got to wait until the steady's out there everything else is good the only quest the only item here is the generator because we're not generating we don't have enough uh, power in the engine to generate electricity for the aircraft that will happen when we spool up our engine so the way I do this spooling up is remember we're on the idle uh, position here and I can just move it from sorry we're in the cutoff position and I'm just moving it from the cutoff to the idle position and push it forward a little bit now it's going to get really noisy so I'm going to have to close the cockpit which I do with my keyboard because I don't think this, not, this lever is working yet so now we have our idle revs here and I just noted that in Nevada I tried this uh, aircraft out in Nevada and I got 320 um, as the idle revs uh, given a pretty much a similar configuration so I'm wondering is it related to a uh, climate and altitude so anyway we've got um, we've got the aircraft um, engines running now so we can liven up our glass cockpit and we do our MCDs first of all 
MFDs right into the engine mode and the left one we'll put into the electronic HSD and we have a course indicator needle here but I would expect that this to uh, change the course indication here and r move one of the bug headings around there but I don't think it's functioning yet and um, this upper part of the UFC and the associated displays here and um, provide various pieces of information once again I've not looked at it in the, in the documentation so I'm not whether they're sure whether it's working correctly or not um, I know that I know that the comms channels are preset and that uh, they can be changed from here we don't need them for this particular um, um, test what we do need is we do need a hood and if I just liven up the hood we can see there's some information here not very much but to get our all our additional information here we go down to the INS switch and we rotate that to nav once again the INS is not working but not too worried about it for the moment we do need the information on the hood here now it's important to make sure there's a number of modes here air to ground nav and vstall mode it's important to make sure within the vstall mode so if that's not in there by default uh, make sure you switch that. Once you get into the air and you want to do the navigation, you can switch to navigation mode. We're also going to switch on our radar altimeter and uh, then we're going to have a look at the HUD symbology because uh, the HUD is important and it's, I have to say it's one of the best laid out um, um, aircraft a HUD for any aircraft um, that I've had the pleasure of uh, virtually flying. Uh, it's got all the information exactly where you need it. We'll just go around the HUD um, in sequence. We can see here we have our angle of attack here, our speed. And one is the um, the true air speed and the other is the ground speed. I'm not sure which one of these is which. You'll see when we get off into the air. We have um, our engine revs here. We have our jet pipe temperature. Uh, this one here is unusual it's a slide indicator a slip indicator and if we look at if we just wiggle our feet here we can see it's moving off center so that replaces what would normally be on our ADI here and there's no um, there's no gauge backup for that information however it is where you need it rather than having to look down here and know where you are and um, it's all handy on the hood the right here you can see we have our nose wheel steering and if I click on that we can change the rate to from low to high. Uh, I'm not sure that that's um, correct because when we move into the nose wheel steering we get the same information. So I know in the in this um, position we can nose wheel steer without touching the button and if we hit the button we should be steering at a higher turn rate. In this position we shouldn't be um, there should be no nose wheel steering at all until we hit the button so I'm not sure that that's a th correct depiction next one up is the flaps and you can see they're at zero and the nozzle is at 11% uh, some time information waypoint information and the VVI vertical velocity indicator the usual gauges are down here altimeter vertical velocity ADI uh, speedometer and angle of attack here So let's look at the flaps, um, the last thing we need to look at before we take off and we can see they're in cruise mode here and I'm going to switch them two steps down, I'm going to use my HOTAS two steps down to put them in the stow position and you can see the stow position there is comes up on a little sign and this means that the, they're, they're hooked in, the flap ac action is hooked in with the, um, with the nozzle action and we we'll see when we look outside the reason for that is so, so that the nozzles don't um, blow into and damage the um, the flaps. Now we don't have any flap indication there, and it's the reason why is because we have our flaps in the off position. I'm going to put it into the on position, and now our flaps turn to that 25 uh, degrees. Now if we look here, we've now got some kind of um, a droop indication here. Um, I'm I'm not sure what what this is or what's caused it. I haven't seemed to get rid of it but it doesn't seem to cause a problem. So let's just have, have, look, have a quick look outside. Well look inside first of all. We see our hood here and we can 
I'm going to adjust our, tro our, our nozzle here and we can see the nozzle adjustment is reflected on the screen here even though we're not moving so you can see as I increase the nozzle position you can see our flaps come up in tandem up to a maximum of 61% we look at what that looks like outside So we can see how they're they're linked. So it's important for any of the stall or restall activities that we're in the stall position for our flaps and it's in the on position here. So we're pretty much ready to uh, take off so I'll see you in a moment back in the pit. Okay welcome back. We're now going to go through um, a takeoff and I'll just talk a little bit about the dynamics before we do a takeoff. Um, going to do a vertical takeoff so we're going to have our nozzles in pretty much the 90 degree position so it's going to be a direct lift off so as you can imagine there's going to be no air flowing over the normal control surfaces so while we have a tendency to use a stick in order to control those surfaces we need to resist that um, in this case and it just does take a bit of uh, reprogramming of your brain because you're used to if you're if the aircraft is you know descending um, your your normal reaction is to pull up on the stick and generate lift but in this case it won't happen uh, the generation of lift is purely done by the increasing of the throttle but the direction of the vector of the the, the thrust vector is determined by the position of <coughs> the nozzle now in order to hold everything vertical you do have to have a little bit of input onto the stick left and right in order to keep it uh, level and the most important thing to watch on the hood is uh, an additional little symbol here called a witch hat and we have to ignore the flight path marker because we're not traveling forward so it's of no relevance we ignore it for for um, for this purpose and what we try and do is we try and concentrate on keeping this hat level so that ensures that we get the best performance from our thrust and uh, it also keeps the dynamic stable so there's not too many things you have to worry about so essentially what you do is let's say we lift off now and we have a very stable position with the nozzles at the correct angle to just keep us hovering not moving back or forward and we keep this hat on the hor horizon there we're level and we're good so in order to move forward if we wish to move forward at that stage what we do is we don't make any adjustments to the stick what we do is we push the nozzle up so we just increase the angle of the nozzle ever so slightly and you start moving forward now because the lift vector changes and we don't have the full thrust now holding us in that position there may be a tendency for the aircraft to drop in altitude in which case now we have to compensate by adding a bit more thrust from the throttle so that's pretty much it in a nutshell but well, the important thing is at the crucial points the crucial phases during particularly during the V-stall um, uh, operations it's really important to keep to try and, and keep this um, in line with the horizon and that ensures that the aircraft is maintained steady so with that in mind I'm going to lift off so the first thing we need to do is here on, on lift off is just check um, all our settings we have our flaps in stow we have our lever pretty much full forward we have our throttle in idle we need to remove our parking brake and what we need to do is we need to establish if we want to just do a vertical takeoff we need to establish what's the best position for our nozzle so I'm going to move the nozzle I know it's going to be around the 70 it, around the 80 percent mark here so I'm going to put it to 80 81 percent and we could we can do a fine adjustment on it and the way I normally do this is I apply some pressure in order to lift the weight off the wheels and once the weights lifted off very slowly I can get an idea of what direction um, the aircraft wants to move in and I can make a slight adjustment take my hand off the stick and leg and, and with one hand on the throttle make a slight adjustment to the um, to the nozzle position so with that in mind we're going to do that now 
and we can see all the information is in front of us here we can see our revs here this is the one to watch here our revs and our nozzle position no control over this tendency to move a little bit forward so I can just do a tiny adjustment on that and now we're just going to go outside and have a look at the lift off Okay, so we've, we've lifted off, now we need to transition to forward flight. And we need to just level our little hat there, you can see, ignore the flight path marker, and now we're going to start pushing the nozzles up. We're currently 84%. So you can see our engine revs are 100%, which is good, we're not overstressing our engine. We have a little more power we need it, but we don't need it in this case, because we don't have much fuel on. So we're pushing forward, see the flight path marker is gone, it's not showing us anything so it's trying to do a job now because we're moving forward. Down to 51 on the nozzle and up to 120 knots. Continuing to rise, once we get about 170, above 170 at the current configuration we're good, we have enough lift. So there we are. And I'm now going to push the nozzle fully up and now I'm going to start looking at the flight path marker so we're in forward flight now gear up flaps up and that's pretty much it for a takeoff Okay, we're now going to tackle a landing and we're going to try a, a vertical landing but that requires us to pretty much come to a stop on the, on the aircraft carrier before we touch down. So we're just going to turn in behind the wake of the, of the carrier there because um, that gives us a good indication of our, of our lineup. And we can see we have our radar altimeter here, which is showing us uh, 800, 900. Also note that we have in our nose wheel steering, we have a center option there. And this is the only configuration, this configuration that's used, the nose wheel is held, held centered in position when the gear is, is up. You'll see that changing as soon as we deploy our gear which we're going to be doing very soon actually I should have been turning a bit more steeply there so we're good, I'm going to deploy our air brakes here and let's get in behind that wake So we should, we should be good for lift up down to around 170 knots. And I'm going to now deploy Landing gear, gear Landing gear. and flaps into our stow position here. So the important things to watch are this needs to be kept on the horizon here and what I'm doing with the nozzle and the the engine revs so I'm going to start applying our nozzles now I'm going to bring it up to about 75 
and we slow down quite quickly now so I now need to need to apply a good bit of thrust down to 54 knots which is quite slow We were down to about 23 knots on the gauge there, which is realistically is probably about 10 knots relative to the carrier. So it's not ideal, but it's uh, it's not too bad. Okay, we're going to configure ourselves now for a short takeoff and landing, and. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to bring our I'm going to bring our nozzle switch up to about 60%, and I'm going to bring our nozzles to 60%, and the stops position is at 60%. So we're in the stow position for our flaps. Gear is good. I'm going to apply brakes and. Throttle full forward, brakes off. So you can see how quickly we lift off. And what you can't do is, you can't pull back on the throttle too quickly now until we get stability. So I'm going to gradually bring the nozzle up until we get forward flight I now need to put in my gear should have done that sooner air brakes off so you can see how quick and easy and easy it is to get off the ground. Okay, we're now going to try a short landing, a stall landing. So we're going to turn in now. Take the stop off our just in case we need it in an emergency. Landing gear, landing gear. Gear of flaps. So what we want to do is we want to touch down at about a hundred knots and then apply the brakes. 
So once again we bring our speed down to about 160 and then start applying the nozzle. Nozzle up 77, maybe down to 70, a bit more. Okay, so that looks like a decent speed. Not ideal, I think I was quite close to the building there, I nearly took a piece of my wing off but I uh, got down anyway. So hopefully this um, little short sequence of clips will help you um, with getting started in the Harrier. Uh, it's definitely a very interesting aircraft and uh, I think one of the best certainly modules that I've got from DCS so far and look forward to um, getting more detail of this as they improve the as they improve uh, diversions and thanks for watching.